training. Rebecca watched in silence as Sister Bianca adjusted the dampeners currently clamped to Angelique's head. The contraption looked like a standard guardsman's helmet with extra wires and tubing attached, nothing truly spectacular, yet the low hum it gave off was enough to send a chill down the sister's spine. Angelique winced slightly in her sleep as Bianca completed the procedure, but other than a few inaudible mumbles she did not react further. Her mental stimuli appears to have gone down. Bianca said, stepping away from the psyker. It should be enough to get her off the dampeners in a few days. That is good, isn't it? Rebecca asked, rising to stand next to Bianca as she finished her inspection. For a while, yes. Bianca looked to Rebecca. Lord Mashes will most likely look for a means of keeping Angelique as far from the fighting as possible, so the tyranid hive mind does not damage her further. Whether it means going back into the dampener or being temporarily stationed on a different ship, that is up to him. Perhaps staying close to the Empress will help. Rebecca offered. Did you not tell me Angelique is at her calmest when within her presence? Yes, but far be it for me to ask the Empress to babysit one psyker while the Tyranids come crashing down on us. Bianca gently stroked Angelique's hand, the psyker quivering from the cool of the hospitaler's armor. So much trauma in such a young mind. Yes, Rebecca said, looking down at Angelique. From here, the young woman appeared peaceful curled up in bed with her hands clasped before her. But within her mind, where the lashings of the warp were a constant threat, who knew what awaited? Would you like me to make some tea? While we wait for any response from Angelique? Rebecca asked. That would be welcome, thank you. Bianca smiled, taking a seat next to Angelique while Rebecca crossed to a small kitchenette the hospitaler had requested be set up, fishing a few leaves from her pocket as she moved to gather water. You know, my greatest fear in the battle to come is not for Angelique. Bianca said, not looking up as Rebecca went about preparing tea. It's for Tara, isn't it? Rebecca asked. Bianca gave a nod as Rebecca continued. She is a strong, lucid psyker, and is mentored by the Empress herself. I do not think there is too much to fear for. I have been around enough psychers during my lifetime. Some were powerful, some were not all had been properly sanctioned by the Inquisition before the Golden Throne. Bianca looked up to Rebecca. Of the ones that faced Cetus, none were left unscarred. The hive mind is a power that rivals the Empress, blasphemous as it is for me to say, and the unprepared mind is like a speck of wood before a flamer when facing those monsters. Rebecca gave a small swallow, turning her attention back to the tea. I don't usually join Mashes on his field missions into active combat zones violence has not been my calling since I took the hospital or oath. Bianca looked back down at Angelique. But for Tara's sake, I must be there in case Cetus' presence is too great for her, even with the Empress training. I... I see the tea would take a little more time to prepare, so Rebecca turned back to Bianca before speaking again. You would have more experience in this than I. We have never fought Tyranids before, much less with Psykers on our side. Stay with the Empress long enough, you'll get more than enough experience. Bianca replied. Ah, but I sound too pessimistic, don't I? Pessimistic is, perhaps too harsh. Rebecca shuffled a bit. Your experience is unlike anything I have witnesses, so you are much more learned in these matters than I am. But have faith in Tara's training and abilities, sister. Perhaps she will prove to me more resilient than we realize and can turn away the Hive Fleet's attacks. That is in my prayers almost every day, sister. Bianca looked down at Angelique. Even with the Empress within easy reach, it still feels so far away, Rebecca said nothing, turning back to finish preparing the tea. You know, Rebecca started, chewing her lip for a moment before continuing. You know you can always ask the Empress directly if your concerns become too great. I know that, Bianca said. But standing in her presence is dash. Daunting. Rebecca finished, to which Bianca gave a nod. I remember when she called me to speak with her while she was building Tara's armor and sword. I trembled the entire way down, thinking that she was mad at me for some reason. She was, concerned, I suppose, for Tara's well-being, asking if she was acclimating to our training and other practices. But she spoke with confidence in Tara, and in us. Rebecca smiled. 
She understood what we were trying to achieve, and from the way she spoke I knew she believed we would be successful she took a sip of tea before continuing. To approach the Empress is like approaching one's mother a journey filled with trepidation, but the outcome is far more rewarding than your initial fears make it out to be. The sister's superior of the Argent Shroud could be quite harsh in discipline. Bianca replied. Though, standing before the Empress does feel much the same, and yet she has never tried to strike me. See? She is already much more approachable than you realize. Rebecca smiled. Speak with her about Tara's training, and set your fears at ease. I promise you, all will become much clearer before here there was a pause before she giggled. That sounds like something Ruth would say. Your sister is strong in her faith, so perhaps that is not all bad. Bianca replied with a chuckle of her own. Thank you for your words, Rebecca. I suppose I allowed myself to slip a little too far. Rebecca nodded. Empowering those that were lost, even if only a few steps from the path, what better way to keep the ways of the Order strong? As they watched Angelique, quietly drinking their tea, Rebecca felt at peace. Twilight took a breath as she slid back, bringing her sword up to deflect Naomi's incoming strike. Her read-through of Sigismund's treatises on sword play was paying off, her blade flashing forward to catch Naomi's chainsword time and again. The sister superior still had her on the defensive, but Twilight could recover from there. Much better, Naomi said, twisting her chainsword around to parry Twilight's lunge. Your motions are fluid and do not expose your weaknesses. Speed could be better, though. I'm still learning. Twilight replied, taking her sword in both hands before raising it to stop a downward strike. And I'm not using my magic, the Empress has been showing me a few spells that help speed up perception and reactions. Has she? Naomi broke away, bringing her chainsword to a guard position. Then I suppose now is as good a time as any to see what you can do. Girls. The other four sisters broke off from their own training regimens, lining up next to the sparring arena. Tara is going to demonstrate that which she has learned from the Empress. Watch closely, so we may fully understand what we face should a similar enemy face us. Are you sure about this? Twilight asked. I mean, I'm still rather new to this, and I don't want either of us to get hurt dash. It will be fine, Tara. Naomi said. Timidness is unbecoming of our order, and the benefits of such training far outweigh any risk. Now, show us your power. Twilight gulped but gave a short nod, bringing her sword low for an upward strike. She furrowed her brow as she reached through the immaterium, her soul weaving through the warp energy until she found the right input. Naomi took a swing towards Twilight, only now it came much slower. Twilight stepped to the side bringing her sword up to gently tap the oncoming chainsword away before time returned to normal. Whipping the sword around, Twilight stopped the blade mere inches from Naomi's throat, the sister eyeing the sword with a mix of wariness and admiration. What was that? Judith asked, her eyes wide. You started shimmering and then all of a sudden you were at sister Naomi's throat. It's a time dilation spell, Twilight replied, bringing her sword down and stepping away from Naomi. The Empress said that it slows down the flow of time in a general area, allowing me or my friends to step out of oncoming danger and respond before the other can react. There was a pause before she gave a sheepish grin. I, haven't really gotten the group part mastered yet. But we saw it as you going faster, Judith said, furrowing her brow. Wouldn't that mean you sped up time around you rather than slowing it down? From your perspective, maybe but speeding up time is a bit more intensive and would probably look like I turned intangible completely rather than just shimmering like I did. Oh, Judith nodded before speaking again. That doesn't make sense, Tara. Trying to comprehend sorcery in general does not make sense. Ruth added, giving a small shudder. Holy or not, it still feels, wrong. I will admit it is a bit unsettling, but as a student of the Empress she has great control over it. Naomi said, looking to Twilight. The way you moved, it was beyond even Asteroots in combat. I just couldn't fully comprehend what I had seen until it was over, she paused before giving Twilight a reassuring smile. I am sure we will all appreciate a proper use of your powers when the time comes. Thank you. Twilight returned the smile before continuing. I'd like to demonstrate more, 
but I have a training session with the Empress soon and I don't want to keep her waiting. Of course, of course. Naomi nodded. We will continue training until you need us again. The other four nodded in affirmation. Twilight sometimes worried perhaps they trained too much, but now was not the time to critique training schedules. She turned and made her way towards the exit, hitching her sword back to its mag clamp before stepping out into the hallway. It was more cramped than the sweeping hallways of the Empress flagship, but to Twilight it was as if she were coming back to an old friend once again, familiarity washing away all other uncertainties. A pang of guilt briefly flared in her mind, but that could be addressed later. She stepped into her room, unhitching her sword and setting it gently on her bed so she could sit properly. That task complete, she knelt in the center of the room, closing her eyes and slowing her breath to relax. Gradually, she began to reach out with her power, her magic brushing against the minds of her fellows aboard the Sanguinium Martyrs as she delved deeper into the warp. Hello Twilight! Twilight opens her eyes to find herself seated on a flat plane, motes of light flickering around her as her senses sharpen. Across from her is Celestia, the other woman seated cross-legged in her dress uniform. I have not interrupted anything, have I? Of course not, Princess. Twilight says, giving her teacher a smile. The sisters are becoming much more understanding of my power since we've been training together. Good, good. Celestia says. It is good to see that at least some superstitions can be overcome. Given what you've told me of some of the powers around here, they have every right to be afraid. Twilight counters. Not all superstition is unfounded, at least here, it's not. Perhaps, there is a pause before Celestia smiles. But we are getting sidetracked, are we not? Let's continue with your studies. Yes, of course. Twilight smiles eagerly. What do you have planned today? I showed the sisters that time dilation spell you taught me, and they seemed impressed, or worried. I'm not really sure which. In their case, it would be fair to say a mixture of both, would it not? Celestia asks. We will go back over a fence later. For now, I would like to extend your defenses, the Tyranids possess many potent psychic weapons and beasts, and I want you to be prepared to deflect their assaults by whatever means possible. Okay. Twilight shuffles into a seated position, the construct of her armor dissipating to be replaced by violet robes. I am ready. Think not of the warp as flowing energy in this moment. Celestia says, closing her eyes as she reaches out through the warp. Draw upon it until it forms a bastion within your soul, but only just so it does not overwhelm you. Feel the contortion of the immaterium around you, press back against the waves with will and understanding. Your enemies will impart lies and deceptions upon your mind, reject them, and you will turn back their spells. So, kind of like forming a shield in the real world, only it's entirely mental. Twilight says. A simplified thought, but yes. Celestia allows a small smirk to cross her lips. I am surprised that you did not know this already. Different universal magic theory and the Imperium doesn't really have a whole lot on the specific mechanics of psychic powers. Twilight closes her eyes as well, pulling the warp closer as she tries to construct the mental bastion. She hears the whispers of thoughts from others again, but a quick shift is enough to keep them from drifting too far into her mind and breaking her focus. For what feels like an eternity yet is only a matter of seconds she waits, her soul projecting forth in preparation for what lays ahead. She feels a pressure against her mind, slowly building in power the longer she holds. Twilight shifts her focus, the mental shield drifting to counter the pressure as she searches for. Briefly it dissipates, but it resurges just as Twilight relaxes, the shield barely holding as a tide of images and sounds floods through the immaterium. She sees the battlefields of Caesarea, strewn with the blood of men and orcs. Young soldiers stand resolute faltering only as the jagged and rusty blades of aliens cleave arms and heads apart. She sees her allies, fighting for survival against impossible odds. Mashas, the sisters, Angelique, all cast their might against the void. One by one they are torn asunder, their bodies spiraling off into nothingness as twilight reaches for them. Some parts she holds on to, only for them to crumble to dust as dying screams echo through her mind. She sees her friends, her friends in Ponyville, 
lost within the void as it closes around her. She tries to reach for them, but the shield slips and the weight of the warp comes crashing down, killing the cry in her throat. Where are you, Twilight, the voice of Spike calls. We are lost. Rarity adds. Why have you gone away? You left us, Rainbow Dash cries. You left us all alone, defenseless. One last image remains. Seven pikes for seven heads, all staring blankly into the void as a red sun burns away flesh. No. Twilight screams, her power surging forward against the images. Each shatters like glass, pain racing through Twilight's mind as she lashes out. Her friends, gone, her allies, slaughtered. What else would remain? What did she have? These are just images. Nothing is real. Twilight opens her eyes. She is back in the original field, the motes of light floating past. Celestia sits across from her, her face marked with sorrow. That was a low blow, and I am sorry for what I showed you. Celestia says, raising her head so she can meet Twilight's gaze. My dreams have been racked with such visions for many years, Twilight. I am sorry that you had to witness such things, but I only wished to prepare you for the challenges you may face. Those, Twilight starts. Those were your dreams. Many warp entities will attempt to inflict horrific visions upon their victims, to break their will and leave their minds open for attack. Celestia says. Though not a daemon, the hive mind acts in much the same way. You need only look to your friend Angelique for an example of what the Tyranids can do to the unexpecting mind. Twilight looks away. Fears, doubts, all were weapons for her enemies to exploit, to twist her mind into something weak exposed. Strike. Perry. The memory of my friends, Twilight says, looking back up at Celestia. I know my friends are safe in Ponyville. It's been. I don't want to think about how long it's been, but they are safe. Those visions were lies, all of them, trying to make me and you break in the face of danger. Twilight gives Celestia a smile. But we have our own strength, and we have each other. That is more than enough for us to stand against the tide. There are others among you that lend you their strength, Twilight. Celestia replies. Do not forget them, and they too will help in your battle against the enemies of mankind, and ponykind as well. Yes, Twilight pauses chewing her lip for several moments. I feel like I'm forgetting that at times. I feel like every day I say here makes Ponyville fade further and further. Memory is part of the soul, Twilight. Fade they may, they will never go out, for the bonds of your friendship burn brighter than any flame or light I could conjure to replace them. Celestia closes her eyes as images of Equestria swirl around them. Twilight sees her memories of racing with Applejack and Rainbow Dash through Whitetail Wood, celebrating the birth of the Cake Twins, helping Cadence prepare for the Crystal Empire's entry into the Equestria Games. She smiles, beaming as the images swirl around her to a final picture of her and her friends, all happy just to be together in peace. The work we do here is important, but Equestria is your home, Celestia says as the images fade away. Hold to this, keep those memories close, and no power of the warp, no entity of terrible power, will be able to dominate you. Twilight sits in silence for several moments, allowing old memories to wash over her again and again. She sighs, allowing her mind to calm before she looks back to her mentor. Thank you, princess, she says. I will never forget this, and I will never forget them. My friends in Equestria, or the friends I have made here all of them give me the strength to stand against attacks and lies she smiles again. Thank you. You are very welcome, Twilight. Celestia replies. Now, let's try the shield again. I promise not to be so rough until you are ready.